splicing, a drum loop, or any kind of loop in Cubase is dead easy. The first prerequisite is obviously to find the most annoying drum sample you can find in your media bay and drag it over into the project window. I'll just zoom the track a little bit so I've got a better view and double click on it to get the inspector and editor on the left hand side. The hit point detection spot on, so I'm going to create the slices. It's okay to go out of musical mode. And now if I click on that event, you can see all of my sliced regions down the bottom. Now we can mute the annoying bits, which was kind of the point of using the sample and also put a crossfade in. This new lower zone is really a revolution in terms of workflow. Anyone that's done this in the past will know how annoying it was to do it on another window over the top of the project window. Let's look at another way of slicing using Groove Agent SE. I'm dragging the annoying sample onto the first pad in Groove Agent, and I'm going to select the Slice tab, which gives us a slicing section in Groove Agent. Now I can very quickly create slices, and I can use some of the different tools there to define how the slices are made. I'm just gonna put a short fade out onto each different slice, and each of those slices have their own pad, which is great, except the annoying part of that loop is still there. So now we can select that pad, go over to the media bay, find another sample or a hit, and just drag it straight over and plonk it down on top of that pad in that first section. We can play the whole entire loop by going over to the pattern section. And there's that new sample. We could alter it and copy it across to other banks in the pad section. For now, let's take a look at some other unique things that we can do to these loop components in Groove Agent. Let's go up to pitch, select a pad, and we can drop the pitch. We could go up to the amp section and drop the volume. We could add an effect just to that one pad or an auxiliary send by moving the auxiliary send up and then going over to the auxiliary send section and adding something like a multi-delay. It's really easy to change the delay parameters. And of course, there's four slots in each auxiliary send. So there's lots of room for manipulating each individual loop component. I've got size issues with my MIDI keyboard. It doesn't go down low enough for me to access the trigger note for this loop pad. So I'm just changing that by right mouse clicking on the pad. Now I can use my left hand to trigger the loop and preview it as I'm making changes inside of Groove Agent SE. My one final trick is to pick up on that pad and drag it over into the Groove Agent track. And now we've got MIDI data triggering the components of this loop, which is cool because it means we can chop the loop up and we can also move the parts around. So for instance, I might just want the first four triggers so I can get my scissors and just make a cut and then copy and paste it. As always, thanks for stopping by. Please like the video if you've learned something and subscribe to our Cubase channel for plenty more quick tips on being creative with Cubase. Catch you there.